Sad violins in the back. <laughs> Welcome to the Chop Team. I'm your host, Seth the Dark Child. I'm your host, Twins Inc. Our show is about two guys and any friends that happen to come over with a topic that we want to chop up. This is our barbershop style podcast. We discuss it all. If the fellas at the shop will go in on it, we will. Let's chop it up. Let's chop it up. Seth yeah. Darcha, how you doing, my brother? Bruh, it's like 95 degrees outside and it's hot. And the crazy part is just a few couple days ago, it was like 80. Did you know? Like, how Bruh. I go from 80 degrees now back up to 94, almost 100 degrees. And it's a humid, humid yes. hotness. It's yes. almost like it's burning. Listen, we're in Atlanta, Georgia, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and... It's, it, they call it hot Atlanta for a reason. I know Texas got their own heat. I know Florida got their own heat. I know Arizona got their own heat. But I'm just saying, here in ATL, it's it's hot. Yes, sir. Like, I could walk from my front door to Seth's dark child's car, and I guarantee I'll have sweat by the time I get back to the house. It doesn't mean- And it's less than, what, 20 yards? Yeah, yeah. Less than 20 yards. Maybe like 15, 16, maybe, maybe 17. Yeah, I went just out. down back. I'm in, just walking. I'm like, yo, walking. it's hot. And normally I try to get about two to three miles a day. I got a step tracker. I am I am trying, folks. Right. But today I was I was out around maybe ten thirty. Mm-hmm. Bruh, I couldn't. It was it was just too much. Listen, I ran to the store this morning, Walmart, to get some few things, and like I said, just going from the door to the car, and the car was super hot. I had to turn the AC on and put the windows down just so I don't sweat while I'm in the car before I get to Walmart. My goodness. And then. And then coming back, it's like I got to carry all this stuff in the house, so yep. I'm definitely get a sweat in. Yep. So, so yes. but global warming isn't real, right? <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, you see the title. It is Sunday too. Yep. Oh, uh, man. Uh, wow. Well, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> the church is burning. Bum bum bum. Yeah. Listen, it's Sunday. It's only it's only it only makes Friday. We talk about this today, and just want to let you know in advance. We are going down the rabbit hole today, so you're going to look, get a little bit of everything today yep. about this. A lot of opinion. A lot, a lot of, of opinion. Listen, but once again, this is the type of talk you, you might hear if you go into the barbershop. You know, Seth, our child, he don't go no more. He got a ball. I don't go anymore because I got, you know, I got locks now. But still, we know the experience of going to the barbershop. Sometimes you ain't got to get a haircut. You just go there and just hang out and get a good laugh, good conversation, sports, whatever. So today is one of this conversation, and it's Sunday, too. And the question is, is the church burning? Now, let me start off, so I'll you how I got here. Um, mm-hmm. this, once again, lay down this rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. as being a black man, which I am, born and raised in the projects, grew up X, Y, Z, um, most of African Americans, not all, but most, have been by default ingrained and raised in the church for as Christianity or Baptist, whatever. We, oh, for most people born before 2000. Right. Yes, right. You, you, you know what? I'm glad you said that. Yeah, I'm an 80s baby. I'm a 70s kid. So that can give you more aspect. But yeah, these early these kids now, different story. But what I'm saying, most of us, and even before us, regardless what we did Saturday, we knew that Sunday morning we had to get up, get up with the church. We don't care how tired that we were, how late we hung out. We know that Sunday we had to be a Bible study, church, and all the things, the whole day being taken up on Sunday. Who cares? Yep, yep. Glad I'd be there. Now, with that being said, now that I'm an adult, not even now because I'm 40, I'm, I, I had this empathy way before I hit 40 plus, mm-hmm. okay? But it's like, I, I have to question it because I just don't, I never get the answers that, that's been, that I ask. And I even ask pastors directly, and I always want to dance around the questions. Like, it just don't make no sense to me. But the problem that I have here, especially with our community, right? African American, black, whatever, where you want to chop it up as chop, no pun, right? <laughs> Is that I have seen mothers of the church who do praise and worship and outside of church living the Christian life. Like they're they they're living it to the T. They're doing everything they're supposed to do per the word of the Bible, right? And I'm seeing these people still struggle every single day mm-hmm. with life. It could be finances, it could be kids, it could be situation. The the point I'm trying to get is that they're not having a blessful life as it should be based on what is right written. And and all about this, oh, but when you die, you will have the abundance of life. 
No one really knows. If, nope. we, if we can be honestly frank here, no one really knows what happened after you die. Simple as that. Mm-hmm. I would love to believe wholeheartedly, 100%, that once we die, there is a heaven and there's a hell and there is life afterwards and we'll remember our friends and family. I, I, believe, I, I would love to believe that. Sounds nice. Right. But also, even, even in the world, it does state that when you live the, 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 the Christian life, the good life, you should be blessed on earth as well while you're living. You should be blessed mm-hmm. even what? going through your day and day. So the problem I have is that I see people that don't give a crap about religion and anything and living their best life. Not everyone, most. So, once again, it just, I want to throw it out there. I know how I got, I, it's, it's come back to me now how we got there, but you're going to circle it back. But I just mm-hmm. want to throw it out there just to get the mind thinking. Okay. This thing about your, your mothers, the prayer warders, the deacons, the ones that you know who are not doing nothing crazy, they're not sleeping with members, they're not fornicating, they're not, they, they, Day by day, they up early, they praying hard, they're praying for you. You see them putting the work in, and you look at their life, it's like, I don't want that. <laughs> as a kid, as a kid, you see, you're like, man, I don't want to be in church Sunday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday to prepare for Sunday. See. And, then you, and, then you don't, and then you don't see the benefits. You got work, you're still stressed out, kids, well, relationships, all that stuff. So. I land my plan there because I'm kind of venting a little bit, but just something to think about, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'm not the only one. I know I'm not the only one. You know why? Because I've talked to other men and women, and they kind of had a similar idea. That's why a lot of people say that I'm not religion anymore. I'm more spiritual. Message. Well, you know what? <laughs> it's so many. Listen, I, a, um, I am. I was raised Christian. I consider myself at this point agnostic. Um, I don't believe in the teachings of the Bible. I don't believe in the Christian God at all. Um, I do believe there is a higher power. That's again, spiritual. See, but I don't believe in the Christian aspects of religion. Correct. Because once again, I know what happened. I know personally that if you go and look, do a little research on the council of Nicaea, in 325 AD, you'll you'll realize that Jesus was made up. Sorry, he was. They they decided that they would do this. The Roman emperor did it. Um, once they decided that, it was over for me because the whole basis of Christianity is based on Jesus. But we're so I'm not here to argue with that though. Mm-hmm. Once again, because I used to like the church, the idea of church as the center of the black community, as the center of the world, religion, religion gives us an, an ideal to live for, right? You want to live a good life so that you will have riches and blessings after death. The people in power have never been really religious. They've all used religion as a tool because the people who have earthly riches are not religious. Mm. Go figure, right? Only the people who don't have earthly ri- uh, riches get religion. Uh, rich people never care. And you can prove that any number of ways. You got a pastor named Creflo Dollar. You going to tell you going to tell me a pastor whose name is Creflo Dollar who used to be a pimp is is truly religious? Really? It make him drink a 40 holy water. <laughs> <laughs> but but for this particular conversation, mm-hmm. I'm gonna go a different route. Okay, I'm gonna go a different route. Rabbit hole time. Told I'm gonna choose. Yeah, rabbit hole. This is my opinion. Um, a lot of people now who consider themselves prayer warriors and living in they um, living in their truth and and religious. You you mentioned that a lot of these prayer warriors married. A lot of these deaconesses and, and elder, elderesses and mothers of the church, do they have husbands at home? Not a lot of them. Not a lot. Okay. Because I know because at one point I was a deacon before okay. I got married. So I know. Okay. <laughs> See, the, re- the reason I said that is because it. what is the basic tenet? What is one, the basic tenet of, of religion? Is that God created Adam. Mm-hmm. He he created Eve from Adam. 
He created her to be a help me. The way the religion is set up, it is God slash Jesus. And then it's the man. And then it's the woman. And then it's the child. In that order, they come unto Jesus. Yes. They come unto the Lord. Well. Well, in this world we currently live in, mm. especially in the last 50 years, if not, but in the last two decades for real, you don't really got rid of all the men, not your family. Wow. So you, you, it's, it's, it's God, Jesus, man, woman, child. Mm. You decided you didn't need a man. Wow. You in violation of one of the, of, of one of the basic tenets of religion. You are trying to approach the father, not through the husband, but through you trying to jump. Oh, you trying to intercede yourself or interpose yourself between the relationship between God and man by removing the man and saying, I don't need a man. And so at this point, you've already disrespected your religion. Now, I don't care if you're praying or nothing, because at base, you've disrespected your religion. What? Why? Why? Why would God reach out to you if at heart you already are you know, going def- against what he going against. Okay. And once again, and that's what I, he said, and that's why I stated the beginning <laughs> relationship, the beginning of the conversation that most, not all, but most African and black people are raised in the Christian Union church. Most of us. Exactly. So now that we are adults now, and now we're in these relationships, you're, you're, you're already disobeying. Exactly. You're disobeying, disobeying the whole process. Forget the man at the head of house X, Y, Z. You're already breaking the ground rules of relationship, period. And and if you and you and God God knows. God knows. I'm honestly, if you disrespecting the man in your if you disrespecting the man you're supposed to be with, you think God don't see that you might disrespect him? You because, can't because hold on, part of the word, we're made in his like an image. Once in I, his I, like an image. I, I'm just and, saying this is in the Bible. I'm not this ain't no my opinion. That's actually in the book. And 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 you can't you can't be up here trying to split hairs talking about I just need God and Jesus in my life. I don't need no man. Jesus was Jesus was born. He is the son of man. He's the son of God and the son of man. You disrespect when you disrespect the men around you, Jesus, I'm sorry, I'm gonna say this, I'm agnostic, not Christian. Jesus was born with testicles. When you don't need no man, you are talking to Jesus. Jesus never told you not to need no man. Sorry, I, I slipped all the way down that. But that's my opinion. So if you don't have a man in your life, if you're not submitting to a man, if you don't have no covering of a man in your life and you trying to intercede directly with the son, irrespective and irregardless of, of having a man in your life, that might be why your blessings aren't being delivered. Oh, I can hear somebody in my back of my ear right now. Well, these men out here and walking into their truth. What? And and I'm going to say that you're right. But why is that? So now is listen, I as a man, I'll take the ownership. Yes. Most oh. of my men running around are not doing living the life what? they're supposed to live. Wait, wait, wait. Go ahead. I just I, I want to put foot on that. Most of these men out here ain't doing it. That's not your place to judge. And I agree with that. So that before you even get into that, if your man ain't doing right, if a man ain't doing right with you, you are free to find another man. But to disregard all men because of your experience with one man and you to and you to judge him as lacking, judgment judgment reserved for the Lord, boo. You once again are in violation. Definitely. And I agree <laughs> with what you're saying there. But let me take it back another layer. Okay. Okay. So the dude that you're messing with, he's not walking in the path as he should be, right? Okay. Okay. But as men or as a young boy who's going to be a man, how is how is he taught? How is he groomed to be that man of God? If if you go back to that certain man you're talking about, what is his relationship with his mom and dad? Was his mom and dad both Relationship there? with mom and dad. That's what I said. Mom and dad. And then go back and see. Were, were, Message. Were they both there? If mom was there and there was no dad, then we go back. So why dad wasn't there? And if you keep saying the same thing because he wasn't acting right, okay, let's go back some more. So why was what was granddad's grow up like? Because mind you, you get so you get you get too far back. He's like, wait a minute, because 
the 60s, 70s, 50s, we was heavily in the church. Now, so at what part did it stop where hey, the men are no well, longer? Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. Okay, you set it up. Hey, you set me up for this one. I did, I did. Okay, first off, ladies. I'm sorry, I gotta quit talking to ladies, I swear to God. Um but okay, peoples out there who might care. Um it's not your isn't it's not actually your fault. But since you know the truth, it is of course still your fault. Um right. ignorance is not an excuse. No, nah, ignorance isn't an excuse. Here it is. When you got it, you can take it back to slavery if it makes you feel better. They 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 drug you from your home. Yes, they stripped away everything you believed in. They yes. they threw you in shackles. Yes, and they put chains on your ankles and on your mind. They gave you a they and they gave you the Bible. Facts. Four hundred years ago, five hundred years ago, our ancestors were not Christians. Most our ancestors had, we worship different gods, different spirits, different. Whatever so we went, we did not go to the Christian heaven when we died to 500 years ago. Okay. So always remember that. Now, when we got here, they took what we used to have, threw it in the trash. We don't have any history. They, they destroyed us as a people. And they said, you know what, but here, read this Bible and follow this Bible. And it'll give you something to hold on to. Right. right. Boom. Now we Christians and that's fine too. Right. Fast forward. Once we get out of slavery, most me most people can't read. Most people have never read a book. You know the only book most of our families had coming out of slavery? One of the few possessions we had coming out of slavery was a Bible. That's it. And you know what we did? We read that Bible. We lived by that Bible. We brought our children up by that Bible. And for some way or another, we decided that we couldn't have judges. We didn't have politicians. We didn't have mayors. We didn't even have police chiefs for the most part. But you know, we had in every community a, a pastor, church. a church, and a pastor. Yeah. So the pastors in our communities led almost every black community. The head of that community was the pastor, right? But the pastor was a man. I'm sorry to say it, pastor was a man. And fast forward a couple more years, you get to Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, you know, all of a sudden black people are strong. Black people are saying, you're not treating us right in this country. We sick of this. We want equal rights. Who led the charge on equal rights? The pastors, the church and the U S government. Here's where you get to say it ain't our fault. If it makes you feel better. The U S government was like, after everything that happened in the fifties and sixties, we're not doing that again. We're going to find, we need to find a way to stop the churches and the black communities from creating leaders. Mm. That's it. We cannot have the black community looking to the church for leaders. We need to start pushing like entertainers and comedians and singers and rappers and sports stars as, as, the leaders of the community because we can't be leaving it up to the churches. Yeah, that'll work for a point. You know, we can, we love out we love us some Muhammad Ali, some some Tommy Hunt, Tommy Hearn, some some um Carl Carl Lewis's. You know, we love us some some sports figures. We love us some Michael Jacksons and stuff like that. These people these people are the leaders of the black community. They they are incapable of speaking for us. It, it, there's no situation in the world. I think Michael Jordan's opinion in a political position should, should be my opinion. I don't follow Michael Jordan. I support him as a ball player, but outside of ball playing, Michael Jordan, me and his politics do not match up. Right. Right. But I'm still going somewhere with this. I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. So the, they said, well, the church is still where the smart people are not the smart people, but, the people who actually have the roots in the church and the community, all of those people are still associated with the churches. We have to stop the churches from making leaders enter in the 1970s, 80s thing called COINTEL pro. Um, that was basically some keep a black Messiah from real rising in the black community. And they created a thing called the FBI. I've spoken about this before. 
That does not mean Federal Bureau of Investigation. When it comes to the black churches, FBI means faith-based initiative, where the churches would be able to get subsidies directly from the federal government. They would get tax breaks, benefits from the federal government. Since they started the FBI, faith-based initiative, guess what? How many leaders since 1980 have you seen arise from the black community? The only the only pastors you see come out of the black community are like Creflo Dollar and T.D. Jason and back in the day, Bishop Eddie Long. None of these pastors have done anything at all, period, to advance the black race. But these are the ones that you see because the black community at that the church at this point had been co-opted by the government. Mm. Once again, once the gov- once the government put the pastors and the, and the churches in their back pocket. That was it for the black community. And now wrapping it up, bringing it all the way full circle. Guess what? Men aren't stupid. Men being guys like us. When the church is no longer a place where we can go and hear stuff that's beneficial to the black community, where we can go and try to get problems solved for our communities, men stop going. We don't, we don't gravitate to places that aren't going to give us what we need. When I want to go, when I want to be entertained, where am I going to go? TV. Or I mean, I mean in public outside. Oh, bar club. When, when I, when I want a haircut, where do I go? Barbershop. When I'm looking. So when I'm looking for leadership or some, when I'm looking for somebody who, who used to be the heart and soul of the community, where am I going to go? Nowhere. Cause it used to be the church. Nowhere. Nowhere. And if and if I'm not, so what am I going to go to church for? I'm not going to church to meet women because that's what the clubs and the bars and stuff are for. I'm not going to the church to find out how to make money because ain't no money circling in the black community. I'm not going, and I'm not getting my spiritual spiritual needs met because all y'all doing is preaching prosperity gospel. Give me money and you will manifest a, a, a new car or a better job. Mm-hmm. That doesn't work for men. I ain't never closed my eyes, hope for a ham sandwich and open my eyes and one was in front of me. And if I did do that, I hope ain't never put food on my plate, put a roof over my head or shoes on my feet. What work. did you say? Mm-hmm. Actions without work is dead. It's dead. So, yes, I, I believe in putting good vibes out in the atmosphere, praying, whatever. But you still have to put the work in to get the results that you want. Exactly. And that that's the end of it. If the church stopped working. When the church stopped working for us, once again, works without, I mean, faith mm-hmm. without works is dead. Now, and I'm still preaching. Sorry I took over this over the stream. But it's important that I get this last part out. No, you're good. And the, re- the other reason the church is burning is because all all the women that took over the church seriously I say women took over the church the church is for the women you got to understand without men they the church isn't doing any work how many how many women you seen outside beautifying the neighborhood those how many how many women how many women you seen go to an old lady house and and clean her whole yard off and fix everything around the house there ain't a group of women that did that they used to be the men of the church the men of the church turned out to defend the communities, whether we did a good job of it or not. You ain't seen no women turn out and, and try to defend the neighborhood. If men didn't move, women didn't move. I'm, I'm just going to bring up the Alabama brawl a little bit. Those were men who jumped up and ran to that man rescue. Now, mm. those were women filming it. And now I'm not saying that women didn't get involved, but when that dude, when it was going down, those were men that ran to the problem. Okay. That's well. when you get men out of the church, there ain't nobody there to run to the problem. And if I do run to the problem and I'm the only one running, listen, I can't, I couldn't have one person couldn't have helped that dude on the, what you call it. All the men had to stand up and help him. That's the same for the church. All the men in the community need to go to church, but the church ain't offering nothing to the men. So that's why the church is burning. You got men out of it and you don't seem to care to want us back. So 
Good luck with that. It's the same thing when it comes to relationships as well. Exactly. Anything you take the men out of is going to eventually fail. It's just that simple. I was telling the girl I was smashing just the other day. I, I said, she, she asked me a similar question about, we were talking about church. Okay. I said, the problem with the church is that there are no men there. There are no men there because there are no men in the community. There are no men in the community because there's no men in the family. Men make all this work. And once you took men out the family, the family falling apart. So y'all still thought y'all could run to the past at the church, but the church is falling apart. And now as church falls apart, the greater society is starting to fall apart because at the very end, it takes a man and a woman to create something that lasts. And it takes a group of men working with a group of women to create a, a community in a town, in, in a city. And you, once you broke up the family, I'm going to blame this on the white man here. Now y'all excuse go right there. Once you broke up the family, everything sitting on top of the family is going to slowly come apart. I'm just going to leave it right there because when you said the last statement, what you're saying that men and women mean that we still need you. We, we never stop need. I, okay, <laughs> rabbit hole. We never <laughs> stop needing women. Listen, never. passport bros. Men didn't say we didn't need women. Men want women so bad. It's, it's a sad thought that we found it more useful and economical to get on a plane and fly to another country to find women because we want women. You guys said you didn't need us. So I don't want to hear none of that other smack. I'm sorry. Keep going. I'm scared to say something else. (laughs) My bad. I just, they, they told us they didn't need us. And that's, yeah, make that make sense. We went and got our passports. We fly to other countries To find women because the ones we got don't want to work with us. Don't blame that on a man. Right. And then we get shamed for it. We get shamed for time to talk to you because we we don't got six figures, right? Then we go somewhere else and talk to a woman that want to talk to us. And then we get shamed for talking to them because they're air air quote prostitutes, whatever. But Uh, that's a whole other rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say it again. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in today on the, uh, the CHOP team today. And we gave you your daily doses of Sunday service today. So if you didn't go into the, um, in the Lord's house today, um, hopefully the chopped in today, we blessed you with the good words of wisdom and knowledge. Yeah. And we ask you out there, do your research. Just do your research. We only know tithes. We only know offerings. We only know blessings. I mean, we will take them, but we don't we, need them. I want tithes. Um, I take 10% of anything. <laughs> 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 but we just want to let you know please walk away with the knowledge of doing a little research and like Seth thought y'all just said just find out what religion our people was doing 500 years ago so before slavery who are we praying to what are we doing who are the gods who I'm sorry I said Our too much spirits, yeah. yeah I said too much do a little research so once again we back next week Sunday 3 p.m. ish thanks for tuning in Seth anything you want to say before you wrap up no, no, I think I went too far all as it is. Well, and in, in the old days, before we leave, sirs, we're all going to say, Amen. Amen. And let, we out. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Later, y'all. One. Uh...